We also believe in something else, which we call personal media. This, you know, the radio, it started here, many things. Started as a very nice family device, and uh, the father was uh, basically deciding when to switch it on and off, and we were all listening to the same thing. I saw a number uh, just that it's been going on for quite a while, that uh, the, the, the famous Swedish uh, radio man, Hasse Tellemar, Rings och Spela vi, had about three to four million listeners every, whatever it was, Sunday or Saturday morning. Now, those were the days, those were the days for the public broadcasters. Anyway, then happened this little thing in 1947 called the transistor. And it was really the transistor that made the music industry and created. And then came a long evolution from the transistor radio, which basically enabled everyone to listen to their music and to radio station to evolve very rapidly into what then was where there was then the Walkman, the iPod, and then all the services that we know today, whether it's Spotify, Deezer, Wimp, Pandora. This is quite an exciting, and the music industry in that sense have understood something about consumer behavior that maybe we in the TV industry have yet to grasp. Another family device, the telephone, fixed telephone. Great, and then has been built out. Wonderful model, you can just charge whatever you wanted. Long-term planning and the old incumbents it used to be 99 years. That's not the case anymore, I can assure you that. And, uh, but then something happened. Actually, this gentleman who has passed away, Usten McIntyre. And I remember a speech that he delivered about 15 years ago when he spoke about the difficulty he had in explaining to all the operators, particularly the incumbent, the difference between a fixed telephone and this device. Didn't look like that at, at that time, of course. And um, it's uh, because it was uh, no one who really could tell him what the difference, the real difference really was. The real difference is not the fact that this is mobile. It is that this is my telephone. And that is so important, and that's really what has driven the whole app industry and everything else, that you personalize it and you make it your consumption. This device, the family device again, the television, started exactly in the same position, maybe in a different uh, position than the radio, but more or less in the same. We were all looking at the same. Then happened color TV, then happened digitalization, everything. But basically, even with fiber networks, we're still at the same position. We haven't really changed anything. But and uh, EPGs and on-demand and TV everywhere, whatever, they're all pretty, what we think, technical expressions that doesn't really mean anything. Because really, what we believe is that TV consumption is going to become personal. It doesn't mean that what we call campfire TV will go away or it will continue to be strong. But there is a new type of behavior where people and consumers, in particular the younger group, are focusing on and are basically deciding on what they want to see and what they want to have, and they have that, and they share that. And it becomes sort of much, also much more a social thing. In a way, it also becomes personal. This is an interesting little figure, which we should also study, which I haven't seen here in the Nordic countries. But basically, TV set penetration in the US for the first time ever goes down this year with two percentage points. That's this is pretty obvious because if you're 22 year, uh, years old and you start living yourself, you don't really need a TV to watch TV, right? So, what we have in HBO Nordic is about is the best of HBO, and you can also see more. We made a lot of research before we started this launch. And we asked um, the consumers in all the four Nordic countries, we asked them, where they were watching today, and what they expected to use in the future. And in particular interesting was really in the future, which for in consumer research means in the next two years. Uh, and um, for smart TV and smartphones, those numbers is quite a big acceleration. In fact, if you looked at smartphone in Sweden and Norway, that number would be over 60%. In Finland, it was, took it down, but that might also be a Nokia effect, 
but Nokia is now quickly moving into smartphones as well. And as you know, smartphone penetration in the Nordic countries is over 60%, and, um, and uh, uh, so it's growing very rapidly. So there's a change in behavior already in place, and consumers have adapted and driven by play services, excellent play services, I would say, both by public broadcasters as well as by uh, free-to-air broadcasters. When we looked at the whole group between 15 and 60 years old, there is a lot of that portion, in total, almost 70%, who are TV series enthusiasts. And if they get the right thing and they get this product with the early premieres and they get the full uh, DVD box, then they are very interested and they are sort of follow it. And they follow different series. This is not the free-to-air product. If you show Game of Thrones on free-to-air TV, you get a pretty low rating. But as far as product, which you pay for, because that's our idea, you pay for our service, uh, you watch it. We don't only have HBO as a content partner, which of course is an important one and is the biggest TV series producers in the world. We also have people like Stars, Fox, Universal, uh, European suppliers, Beta. We are premiering Borgia in February, uh, for instance. And uh, so we will always have one new series, probably two new series every month that we will show to our audience. Some, in some cases, we will even be sort of showing premieres or be the first in the world to showing some of these premieres. So if you summarize that, day and date premieres, access to all seasons, and of course, extra material that you today get with the DVD box uh, if you buy that. HBO's own series actually are among the top uh, five of the top ten DVD sale, uh, boxes today and DVDs today sold in Nordic countries are from HBO. So we believe we have a very significant market just to start grabbing that existing market with a much more consume, interesting consumer offer and price. We are not only an online uh, service, we also work with operators. Telia Soneras Corporation all throughout uh, the Nordic, we have already announced, they will distribute us on the various platforms, both fixed and mobile. We are also talking to others. Elisa in Finland, we also have announced. And we will continue to do so. So we are pretty uh, flexible when it comes to how we will distribute. If the operator wants to work with us, we are very happy to work with them. But we will also have a service that for starting at 79 crowns in Sweden will be available to uh, everyone who has a broadband connection, whether mobile or fixed. We have cooperation partners. We work with both, of course, the Android people. We work with Samsung a lot, who are packaging HBO service in a number of their devices, notebooks, uh, smartphones, as well as smart TVs. And um, as well as, uh, as I mentioned, uh, Telia, Sonera, and Elisa, as well as with Microsoft. We expect to have the service on Xbox uh, in a couple of months from now. We have a separate company that are doing all the sort of uh, e-commerce and are doing the whole platform. Uh, won't bore you with this pretty boring title, but basically it's dealing with everything from the ingestion of the service to the transcoding, to the delivery, to the customer service. We will have customer service. We will not have a telephone service where no one is answering. Uh, we will have a real customer service because we want to have happy subscribers that get the right subscribers, which is very important. But we also work on social media. As you might have noticed, we have, all, we have today almost 200,000 registered fans through the various social media that are ready to become customers tomorrow, the moment we start. And that's a huge responsibility which, which we take very seriously. And uh, the architecture is not uh, just showing that we basically are building interfaces. And UDS, which is a separate company that uh, I own with a few partners, is doing all this, and it's a white label. We don't want to bring in another brand, another service, another sort of uh, name towards the consumer. We believe that the consumer is best served by uh, dealing with the brands that they like. And also those publishers, like HBO, there could be many others in sports or book publishing, whatever, will be also much more service coming directly to the customers. The customer gets a better price, and the publisher, the content owner, gets a better uh, margin. Then everyone wins. So that's it. Uh